da, 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 to the detention center to talk with Junie. Sh I pressed the wrong button. To the detention center to talk to Junie. October 24th, detention center, visitor's room. And I'm not sure what I'm doing for my birthday. I might stream depending on, I mean, I might hang out with friends because of the fact that things are getting easier to do now. So, I mean, if I don't have a stream on my birthday, specifically for my birthday, I'll probably have one um, at least like that weekend or something. But yeah. Athena, thank you so much for coming. She called me Thena like she used to. Maybe she's finally letting her guard down. <coughs> well, thank you. I still have a month. Like I said, it's July 24th, so I still have a month and a week, basically. But yeah. Junie, the crime's unfolding exactly like your script. Any idea what's going on here? We wanted to make it fair, so the script was kept secret until the day of the mock trial. And the only people who knew the details were Professor Court and I. Hmm, nothing we haven't heard already so far. Uh, however... Yes, what is it, Junie? Well, there was this one article in the school paper. You mean this one? It's more like a tabloid uh, piece than a newspaper article, if you ask me. I've been worried that the trial would wreck the friendship between Robin, Hugh, and me. She wants to stay friends, but both the guys are hoping to take it to the next level. Wow. Oh, the passion of high school drama. Wish I could have experienced it. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking too, uh, just really. I'm, I I'm having a, a feeling about those two, especially with his creepy smile and Hughes being like, that is the way. And it's not, it's the bad way. That's the bad way. And I know I shouldn't have, but I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it and immediately and changed it back. Ah, so if Robin had won, he wouldn't have been able to confess his love to Junie. That would have kept the trio's relationship the same. Never knew Junie could be so devious. Sorry, I guess my personal problems probably won't be of any help in court, huh? You never know. Help often comes from the most unexpected places. Thanks, Juniper. We should all just stab. Yeah, exactly. The all. I was wondering about that all that you had on you when you were arrested. Yeah, I found the detective full of right. Ah, oh, we found the all. That's evidence. But it'll be a mock trial. It was the murder weapon from the mock trial. Professor Court and I were prepping it in the art room until the day before the trial. I didn't even realize I still had it on me until I was arrested. And then we've nothing to worry about. There shouldn't be any way to link it to the crimes. Still, that blood red color on the all bothers me. Wasn't it just paint or something? I mean, I was looking at it from pretty far away, but... It probably was just paint, but that's what bothers me. It wasn't on the all when we were... When we were prepping it yesterday. Wait, it wasn't? Then how and when did it get there? Well, before the mock trial began, I showed Thena and Mr. Wright to the waiting room. Then I went back to my dressing room to get the trial props we were going to use. That's when I found the art room key in the all with what looked like blood on it. A key and the all? Professor Court normally has the art room key since she's the fine art club's advisor. And since that key was there in the dressing room, I thought she was the one who had painted the all to look like it had blood on it. Oh, no. <coughs> Oh no! Oh, Ellie, I'm sorry. Did it just? Oh no! Did you did you get rid of it? Is it no longer on this plane of existence? And after all, she always insisted that props should be realistic. So, all suddenly shows up on the day of the trial with what looks like blood on it. I have a really bad feeling about this. Me too. But let's not jump the gun on this. Aww. I'm sorry, Ellie. You and Professor Court were busy preparing the mock trial together yesterday, right? Was that the last time you saw her? Yes, I left school around 6 p.m. Did you notice anything different about her? No, I didn't notice anything out of the ordinary. She looked and acted the same as always. There, there were two of them? Oh, no. And I know 
it's bad enough if there's one, but then if there's two, your brain is just like, does this mean there are more? You drown them in sand. Oh, okay. She looked and acted the same as always. Yeah. I would have never guessed she'd end up like this. Looks like we're about out of time. Thank you for coming to see me. We'll do everything we can to prove you innocent tomorrow. I know, and I believe in you, Thena. Well, I should go now. Bye. Okay, bye. Is she gonna be alright? She's like a shadow of the girl we met back at the academy. The Junie I knew was always like that, a little weak and sickly. But the fact that she's lifted her facade shows that she trusts us. Even still, what is it? Well, when Junie and her two friends were talking about their friendship, I sensed some discord in their hearts. Seriously? Yeah, but it was really faint. I might have been mistaken. I don't know, I don't think you were mistaken. There's no reason to doubt their friendship. Is there? Oh. I would say, well, I don't know, it's super early, so I guess I was like, you could take a shower and maybe that would help, but I guess um, it's not polite to take a shower in the middle of the night. Well, I don't even know how noisy it is. Don't worry, everything will be fine. You and Juniper are friends, right? You know what friend, that friend I mentioned to you earlier? Well, get this. Whenever something's troubling one of us, the other can just feel it. That's real friendship. I suppose you're right. Might as well forget about that and concentrate on the trial. Yep, tomorrow's the big day. Let's sort out what we know so far. Okay. The victim, Professor Constant Court, was murdered in the art room on the third floor. Then her body was moved to the outdoor stage in the quad. Also, the location of where we found the body was just as the mock trial script described. Taking a shower at 1am would raise some quest. Okay, well, I mean, but could they really blame you if you feel icky because, you know, spider times? I mean, I'm sure that there's been stranger things that could happen. I wish those were the only similarities they shared. What do you mean? What I mean is the script of this case in, and this case are exactly the same in almost every respect. So it follows that the actual trial may very well unfold just like the mock trial did. Wow, Apollo, that's incredibly negative. Oh no, the mock trial ended right before the prosecution was about to win. Well, that's not gonna happen. This time, Junie will be declared not guilty. Of course, I intend to get our results the honest way. We can do this, we'll be fine. After all, I have Apollo and he's the king of being fine. He continued. <sighs> Episode three, yep. Woo! That only took us like over two hours to get through the very first part of this. Can you believe that? Wow, am I? I don't know if that's like the time. Maybe that's the time. I, I, I was like, I don't think I've been. Have I been playing this game for 23 hours? I don't. I hope not. Probably not. I think I'm. I think that's just the time that the DS thinks it is. Well, the yes. OK. Ugh, my butterflies have butterflies in their stomach. That's a lot of butterflies. So, what's it like to have your very own case for the first time? My heart hasn't raced this fast since I ran that full marathon last year. If it keeps up, you might get a lawyer's high. You know, like a runner's high? Relax, everyone's nervous their first time. Hey, get out of here! <laughs> so my fears weren't unfounded. After all, today's prosecutor's so terribly brutal and willing to use any means necessary to win a conviction. Where's that the ends justifies the means concept again? Now that it has come to this, we have no choice but to fight fire with fire. The end justifies the means. No, fuck you. I wish he'd stop saying that. 
That's your method, Professor. I'm going to defend Juniper my own way. But Miss Sykes, he just yesterday you told me. Yeah, seeking justice. But if this trial proceeds in the same manner and ends in the same way as the mock trial, would you not lose everything you've worked out so hard to gain? Well, I'll just have to make sure that doesn't happen then, won't I? My, but aren't you a stubborn one? Well, I suppose you will have to learn of your own inefficient. I think it's supposed to be, or inef inefficacy, right? I think. Inefficacy. And I don't know. I, I'm trying to get it so that the captions get it right, but whatever. The hard way. Grr, fuck you. Forgive me, Professor Means, but can we just leave it at that? Oh dear, please forgive me. It's just, I wish to protect Juniper by any means I can. I do too, but now if you would excuse me, I need to go forge some evidence. Ugh, thanks to him, I'm feeling even more pressure than before. Don't let it get to you, Athena, and don't forget to keep smiling. I'll be fine, I haven't forgotten what Mr. Wright said. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. Trial's about to begin. I'll show you to the courtroom if you please, if you're done sweating. Paula, I'm counting on you to support Athena this time. Okay, Mr. Wright, leave it to me. That's right, I have Apollo to back me up. Junie's fate rests in my hands. I won't rest until she walks free. That's right. Ugh. Okay. Day one, court is now in session. All rise. Court is now in session for the trial of Juniper Woods. Uh, Athena Sykes, the defense team leader, is ready, Your Honor. That didn't sound very confident. You sure you're okay? You'll take your met. Yeah, no, that's probably a good idea. I know that you're trying to kind of stretch them out as much as possible, but it's it's already it's already fairly late, and you got shaken up. So uh, I'll be fine. Your boldness. I know, I know, as usual, you want me to deliver the opening statement. Ugh! This case is crystal clear. I see no need to explicate it any further. Now, summon the witness. Is, some, is there something the matter? Please do share your boldness. W whatever gave you that idea? Bailiff, please call our first witness. And now we don't even get an opening statement? Yeah. Ah, uh, wh why? What? Detective Fulbright, he and the prosecutor Black will have become quite the team. Oh, right, the case brief. <laughs> Leave it to me. Yes, let the detective in charge, everyone's favorite friend of justice, explain. What was that just now? It's like he and Blackwell are totally in sync. Well, I don't think they're capable of mind melding if that's what you're thinking. Yeah, so the eyebrow tint is- Oh, already? Wait, wait, so do you just- Is that something you don't have to worry about getting, like, mussed up when you sleep? Or something? I don't really know how some things work. I'm sorry. All right, Detective Fulbright, would you please explain the case to the court? Professor Court's body was discovered on October 24th at approximately 2.30 p.m. She was murdered with this all I have here. The victim's blood and the defendant's prints were both discovered on it. It only stays on for an hour and then it just, oh. Oh wait, cause the tint, that's the stuff, it just, you have it on for the, and then when you take it off, then everything's good, right? I'm like, Oh god, it makes me think of like lip stain. Isn't there something kind of like that too? I, you know, just eyebrow. I, I, I yeah, I was like, I, you. I don't know, Ellie. I, I'm very bad. My eyebrows are always the same color and in, in everything. Eek! 
Why did I just get attacked? Oh, it dropped off the autopsy report. Court's autopsy report added to the court record. Estimated time of death between 6 and 8 p.m. Cause of death, blood loss from a deep stab wound in the victim's side. Oh, oh, so it's like a, a filler type thing. Okay. I'm learning, I learned today. Wow, that bird can deliver evidence too. Blackwell has trained him well. Maybe Blackwell should train it not to mess up people's hair while he's at it. Moving right along, the body was discovered on the outdoor stage, although no blood was found there. Okay, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah, I am. It's okay, V. I'm just, I, I'm just the, uh, the person who's like writing everything down. The, oh God, what are they called? The court. Uh, shit. You know what I mean, though. They have, like, the people who transcribe everything. It's fine. Fuck, what are they called? I know that they're, like, a very specific job, and you have to be able to, like, type really fast and stuff. Stenographer! There we go. That's why I was like, it's kind of a weird... Eh, yeah. Oh, yeah, well, that makes sense, RC, for sure. However, we detected traces of... A massive amount of blood in the third floor art room. In short, the murder took place in the art room. So then the body had been moved from the art room to the stage? Precisely, and there is one more piece of irrefutable evidence. A recording made by a tape recorder that a school paper reporter hid in the art room. Totally not illegally, but yes, illegally. It captured a female voice screaming, you're a goner. What's this? You have such a recording? Must be from that tape recorder Miriam mentioned. But why is this the first time we've heard of a death threat at the moment of the murder? Shh! Silence, please! I would like to play the tape for you. I was like, that's, wh where is it? Where did they say it? Yeah, and how did Juniper, exactly. Like, I don't know if that's, I don't think that's going to work so well. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, we don't need that. We just need, the only thing that Ellie needs is just to look constantly sassy, which I guess is normal, but, you know. Been going to the wrong ones then. Hmm, it's quite hard to hear. But the voice does sound female? Tape recorder added to the court record. But, I mean, wouldn't Athena at least be able to discern the difference between that person and whoever else because she has super sensitive hearing? Hmm. The noise and low volume of the voice have made voice print analysis all but impossible. Then you haven't identified the voice as belonging to the defendant. You don't think? Oh, no. Are tat? Are there just not good like tattoo places around where you're at? Not so fast. After all, voice print analysis isn't everything. If the victim was killed at night, then discovered in the afternoon the next day. The question is. When was the body moved? Yeah, they do seem to be really experts when it comes to like body hair treatment type stuff or like eyebrows and things. My sister used to get, I don't know if she still does it, but she used to get her eyebrows, um, she didn't get them waxed or trimmed. Um, there's, there's some technique called like threading where they literally have like basically two strings that they use to kind of like pluck them, but it's very precise. She always was like teary eyed afterwards, though, because apparently it's like super painful, but it also lasts a while. Yeah, no, no. Well, she was like, yeah, it's not great. And I'm like, why do you do it? She's like, because it works. And I'm like, OK. Yeah. The question is when the body was moved. Oh, I know it could have been moved in the middle of the night when no one was around. Sorry, but no. The campus was full of students that morning. However, no one reported seeing a body. 
That means the body was moved sometime before the mock trial when all the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall and the rest of the campus was empty. It was during this time Hugh O'Connor, one of the mock trial participants, found the body. Which I think is actually a lie because he believes in bullshit, so... I don't know. So the prosecution heard about Hugh seeing the body. Wait one moment, if all the students and faculty were gathered in the lecture hall, then there wouldn't have been anyone who could have moved the body. <laughs> have no fear, for there is always an exception. Exception? Oh. I don't know, I mean, well, I guess I don't see pictures of you all the time, but I think they look fine. But I'm also probably not the best judge of eyebrows. Like, mine are just the way they are. Sometimes I just have to trim them if they get like very long at the end, but yeah. The three mock trial participants were standing by in individual dressing rooms. They were the only ones who had free access to the deserted campus before the mock trial. What, then that would mean what, 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 what would that mean? <laughs> Those three students were the only ones who could have moved the body. Injustice we trust. I don't like where this is headed, Athena. Me either. And by those three, I mean... Hugh O'Connor, Robin Newman, and Juniper Woods. I knew it. Please, Detective Fulbright, don't say what I think you're about to say. Injustice we trust. I take it everyone understands now. The voice believed to be that of the murderer was female. And out of the three people who could have moved the body, just one is a girl. That leaves the defendant Juniper Woods as the only possibility. No! Come on, we knew he was going to say that. You see to the... <laughs> Impressive. He has you on the ropes even before any cross examinations. You could have at least you could at least pretend to be upset for me. <laughs> A splendid job, fool bright. That could not have been any clearer. Feel free to anticipate a salary raise next month. Are you kidding me? This bullshit policeman who only believes in justice and has like no other redeeming qualities gets a pay raise while gumshoe while Bumbly does his best and constantly has to eat ramen, and I think he was even in debt eating ramen. Fuck that guy. I don't like Fulbright at all. Ha ha ha! I don't do this for the money. It's all about justice. And justice we trust. Stop flashing your dumb badge. Hm. Not only a halfwit, but a perennial stick in the mud you are. Guess neither the carrot nor the stick works on Detective Fulbright, unless it's the carrot and stick of justice. Now, Bailiff, please bring our next witness to the stand. <sighs> Scuttlebutt, stand up. So our first witness is a cardboard box? Stealth mode activated. Oh my, the box has hands? Smile, your honor. I don't know, I'm pretty sure you're not allowed to take pictures inside a courtroom. What the dickens, I've just had my picture taken. Oh, probably, Ellie, not, not that, I mean, considering how things usually turn out for the people apprehended. You just kind of go like, hey, that's bad. Taking you in. Sorry, probably never going to see you again. Miriam Scuttlebutt, senior at the Legal Academy. I'm a reporter on the judge course. Juniper's been a bad, bad girl. I'll tell you all about her crimes. Um, might I ask whether you could come out of that box? How will I get any more scoops if I blow my cover? So the answer is no. After all... Covert action is undercover reporter's bread and butter. Hmm. But testimony from a faceless witness is highly irregular. A 
former ninja I met in the clink said that exposing those who work in the shadows is to pass the death sentence upon them. Oh my, I never thought of it that way. Very well, if we would spare a life, I'll make a special exception this time. Make a special exception for everyone. Former ninja in prison. Holy Shinto, how, how can the judge believe this load of croc? Thank you for the water, RC. Now your testimony, please. Oh, but take care not to reveal your face. Witness testimony. The similarity of the case and the script. The murder happened exactly like Juniper's mock trial script. Up until the mock trial began, only Professor Court and Juniper knew, knew about the script's contents. But Professor Court's sudden decision not to use the script sparked Juniper's murderous rage. Juniper has to be the killer. She has a motive and the murder is just like her script. Uh, the murder is just like her script. Could such a thing be true? But that's impossible. But Oh, God. Compare her script with the murder case in the crime scene photos. Then you'll see. <laughs> This is so simple, even an ape posing as a decrepit old judge could understand. Ah, uh, that sounds, that's rude. Only the victim and the defendant were privy to the script. Ergo, the defendant is the killer. Furthermore, in the art room where the crime supposedly occurred, this witness's script, along with an envelope on which use was written, were found. This proves that the accused script had been rejected the day before the mock trial. She pressed the victim to use her script, an argument ensued, and then the fatal stabbing. That makes perfect sense. What now? Man, Athena, you just give up so quick. Prosecutor Blackwell has all his ducks lined up in a row. He's really on a roll now. Ugh. He's like a pit bull once he sinks his teeth into you. How dare she? My script had it all. A bum rap and phony evidence, grudges and betrayals. Hmm, I trust the defense is ready to cross-examine the witness? No, no, no problem. I mean, yes, I'm ready, I think. Time to find a hole in her testimony and unbox the truth. You really had to say that, didn't you? You just, you had to say it that way. I've seen it done over and over. I know I can do this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, yeah, it's all about trial and error. It's fine. The similarity of the case in the script. Ugh. Let's see. So I'm just taking a look at who's online. There's actually a lot of people online. Because I think after this recording, we still have about half an hour or so left. But I think after this, I want to, uh, I probably want to raid someone so I can eat something and, and take care of some things. Trust us, Chaos. Yeah, well, I know, but I mean, you just keep doing it until it works. And at least the hair comes back. Yeah. Yeah, the murder happened exactly up until the mock trial began. Only Professor Court and Juniper knew their crew. Oops. Anyone who saw the mock trial could have recreated the crime. After they saw the mock trial, they could have easily staged the body just like the script. Except the body was there before, whoops. Hmm. Where is the trial which pits Hawk against Canary? Whoa, what did you just say? <laughs> if he's so wary, he should try thing less. Bet that'd save some energy. This is no time for jokes, Apollo. He just called me a canary. Don't let them get to you. At least canaries pick up on things quickly, just like you. I shan't repeat myself, so listen carefully, Sykes Dono. Hugh O'Connor discovered the body before the mock trial even began. How could one stage the body as it is in the script before anyone knew its contents? Yeah, that is right. Okay, I think not. You're rudimentary of my elementary school child. Elementary school? Oh! Wow, shut up. I hate this judge. 
I like how, remember when, uh, okay, it was the very first game, child had camera and the judge is like, I don't know if we can have that in here. All of a sudden, he doesn't give a fucking shit about cameras. Hate this man. Yeah. Okay, we gotta find a hole. We have to find Scuttlebutt's hole. Pretty sure you're not allowed to- yeah, I'm pretty sure you're not either, and you're also not allowed to put, um, listening devices all over your school, but... What do I know about justice? How do you know that Professor Court wasn't going to use her script? Hmm. There in the art room where the heinous crime, crime took place, an envelope marked Use and Miriam Scuttlebutt's script were found. Evidently, the script that was going to be used belonged to the girl in the box over there. It's only natural that my script would be accepted and hers rejected. I introduced all sorts of brand new concepts, including bribery and fake evidence. It was a cutting edge script portraying a courtroom battle in the dark age of the law. Can everybody stop fucking saying that? I hate it so much. I can't help but feel Professor Court went out of her way not to use it. But Juniper, she used some devious, underhanded tactics to get her script chosen. That's why her script, and not my masterpiece, was used in the mock trial. How's that for an explanation? Uh... There must be places where the script in the, this case diverge. Don't sweat the details. That kind of stress will give you wrinkles. Gotcha. I'm not worried. My skin is as fair as silk. Objection. Why do we give a shit about your skin? Indeed, you are quite fair. Fairly desperate. Wow, and look at you laughing at your own joke, Black Will. Gotcha. What did you just say? Wow. <laughs> He's just not giving a shit. He's like... Eh, whatever. <laughs> Blackwell really turned that one around on you. Apollo, you're not helping. <laughs> Whoa, easy there, Athena. Now you listen to me. The two cases do indeed have their differences. For one, the stage hasn't yet been erected in the mock trial script. And in the actual case, there were signs indicating the victim's wrists had been bound. But such differences pale in comparison to the host of similarities. In any event, replicating the crime without knowledge of the script is an impossibility. Hmm. Looks like I won't be passing this off as a coincidence. Huh, what a total burn. Try again, why don't you, pawn of woods? Ah, uh, shut up. I believe you press the witness more than enough, Miss Sykes. What? No! Now, do you see how clear-cut my case is? Take it now, and f in that fair, desperate mind of yours. Etch it so deep you may never forget! N no no Even my arguments get thrown back in my face. It wasn't supposed to be like this. What am I gonna do? Athena. You should just about have all the answers you've been looking for now. Hmm? Think about it this way. If the killer knew the details of the mock trial, would they really commit the crime in the exact same way? I don't follow. Try to place yourself in the killer's shoes. I bet you'll discover an inconsistency if you do. Oh, I get it. Thanks, Apollo, I think. Miss Scuttlebutt, just so we're clear, you're claiming that the killer intentionally made the crime scene look just as it was in the script, and that it is beyond the shadow of a doubt, not a coincidence. Is that correct? <laughs> no, duh, after all, it's just more evidence of Juniper's evil she-devil ways. Gotcha. <laughs> what did I say? What did I say? Our client made the crime scene look just like the script, something known only to her. That would be not only foolhardy, but completely irrational. 
What, what do you mean? Yes, Miss Sykes, please tell this court what you mean by irrational. Be oh, you dumb fuck. It wouldn't make any sense for Junie to mimic her own script on purpose because it would. Uh, wait. Mean leaking the script. Wait. Make her the culprit? Yeah. And she doesn't want to be the culprit. The murder scene was the same as it was in the mock trial script. That in and of itself is irrational. Cat, cat, cat. What's wrong with them being the same? Yes, Miss Sykes. Care to explain it? Shh. <gasps> okay, let's say for argument's sake that Ms. Woods is the killer. If so, then... What reason would she have to intentionally make the actual murder mimic her own script? That's easy. She was admitting that she was the... Ah! That's right. If she had really done that, it would have been like proclaiming to the world that she was the killer. So what we actually have here is evidence of someone trying to frame our client. Cat, cat, cat! Nope. The body was found the day of the mock trial. In short, the day the details were revealed. Yeah, he really shouldn't. He should retire and get somebody younger and more judgy. So it'd be completely inconceivable for the murder to go exactly like the script. Cack, 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 don't let it get to your head just yet. Hmm. I would, it would seem Justice Dono's comrade in arms has finally drawn her sword. However, the blade is dull and it shall remain so until, you're ma until you master its use. <coughs> Stuff, enough with the stupid sword metaphors already. There is a perfectly good reason for the inconsistency of which you speak. R reason? What reason? Must I spell out everything? Hm. You are what people today call high maintenance. The accused had intended to stop the mock trial, and in that event, nary a soul would have been wiser to the similarities of the case and script. Objection. No! The mock trial was only stopped after the body was accidentally discovered. Objection. Hm. Our witness here had also discovered the body. In fact, she was led to our dearly departed professor by the accused herself. W what? Miss Scuttlebutt saw the body too? Precisely. And with the discovery of the body, the mock trial ought to have been canceled. Wait, so you didn't call the police? Nope, I kept it secret for my big scoop. <laughs> How many people are going to keep a dead body a secret? Y you can't do that. I made her pay long and hard penance for her sin. Did I not, my little box top? Cat cat, compared to the work of a war correspondent, the sheer terror of that was... Gag! Jeez, I wonder what the twisted samurai did to her. Block off all holes in her box? And spin her like a top while Detective Fulbright cackled in delight? That sounds more nauseating than scary. Enough jabbering. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, there's a lot going on here that's highly illegal, but it's a game, so it's okay. They only get mad at us if we do something kind of wrong. Enough jabbering, witness. Continue with your testimony. Sh sure, Mr. Samurai, I'm ready to finish off that she-devil. Okay, what Scuttlebutt saw? I snuck into Juniper's dressing room while everyone was at the lecture hall. Juniper had changed into her stage costume. I asked her, what are you doing? When suddenly she fled into the hallway as if she wanted me to follow her. I followed her all the way to Professor Court's body. She led me right to it. I'm positive it was Juniper because she was wearing the costume she had made. Why did you withhold such a key testimony? Gah! Well, what's that supposed to mean? Athena, you shouldn't have even started your cross-examination. I know, but her testimony points to her as being a potential suspect. Well, I don't think Prosecutor Blackwell is. No, wait, I bet he's already thought of that. 
<clears throat> the witness left the lecture hall to sneak into Miss Wood's room before the mock trial. <clears throat> that means she too could have moved the victim's body. Gak! The prosecution's claim no longer has any ground to stand on. Help! Yeah, I don't think most people are allowed to have birds attack people in court either, but... No, no, no need to ruffle your own feathers, so... When you squeak like a little brat, it agitates Taka. Do you want him to peck your eyes out? No thanks! <clears throat> you listen here, the witness has a perfectly good alibi. Oh yeah, I do! Uh, around the estimated time of death, I was at undercover reporter class. It's right near my home. That sounds like... Just the dumbest bullshit anybody could try to make an excuse. You think about... <laughs> Elle Woods from Legally Blonde? Oh, I forgot about that. Undercover reporter class? The proverbial rug has been pulled out from under you. This witness could not be the killer. The defense must look before leaping, or at least make sure the rug's secured on the floor. I tried to warn you. No, but undercover, that's not a fucking thing. Who, like, that's why I hate the prosecution so much all the time, because they're just like, oh, they were at, um, they were at bullshit school time. They couldn't have done it. There's no fucking way. Didn't you hear what they said? They were at bullshit time. Totally real bullshit time. So fuck you, defense, I guess. Ugh. Well, there ends the cross-examination. Let's allow the witness to step down. Hmm? No, no, wait a minute. The defense has no right to cross-examine the witness after that little spectacle. That's not how that fucking works. Or whatever a man is sowing, this he will also reap. Why can't he say you reap what you sow? Hmm. Very well, if the cross-examination is over, I suppose the witness may go home. And go to their totally bullshit class. That's totally real, maybe. Perhaps spend some time in her lovely box and recover from today's stressful events. Oh. Don't you worry about me, your honor. There's no rest for the wicked or journalists either. My third eye is always eyeing a scoop. She's always eyeing a scoop? Well, back to the trenches. Bye-bye. Objection. Apollo, objection. Hold it. Yeah! Apollo! Ugh. Not so fast, Miss Scuttlebutt. Apollo, there's just one thing I'd like to ask. Did you take a picture of the victim's body? And if not, why not? I, well, that is, no, I... I didn't take one. Well, that's strange. Why wouldn't you take a picture if you're always eyeing a scoop? Get cat! Did you or didn't you really see the victim's body? Get cack! Er, it's not like I um actually saw it, saw it, but what the devil? Whoa! Wow! Imagine the person who made totally bullshit class and is the just talking about making a script with forged evidence and lies is lying about something. Who could have seen it coming? Definitely not the smartest man in the world. Blackwill over here. <sighs> Did you hear that, Your Honor? The witness didn't actually see the body. That completely overturns the prosecution's claim that the witness was led to it. J -j -j justice Dono, you dare bear steal at me again? Yeah, because you, you're you fucking dumbass. I don't know. People are like, Black Will's pretty cool. I hate him with this bullshit. Like, how do you not notice these things? How do you not notice that this girl is talking out her goddamn ass? D -d no. Nice try, boy wonder. So what if I didn't see the body? The fact remains that Juniper led me there. Feast your eyes on this! And what exactly am I looking at here? 
It's a crucial moment forever frozen in time by my third eye, your camera. <clears throat> a photo clearly showing Juniper Woods. Gak! Why did you not tell me of this? It's a shocking scoop I was saving for just the right moment. And, uh, and that would be right now, right here in court. Gak! What did I do? What did I do? All journals keep their scoop secret until the right moment. This is the court of law. You show all shit when we tell you to. Pretty brave hiding it from Blackwell like that. Or pretty stupid. Well, this is an unexpected turn. Yeah, I know, exactly. You just, you just kind of... I could be a judge there, because I'd be like, Man, that doesn't make sense, but the prosecution sure has a good point. She reminds you a lot of... Uh, yeah, but I mean... I don't know, I think I don't like this person even more, because Lotta... Lotta just was hiding the fact that she wanted a scoop. This bitch is just... fucking terrible. Like... Lotta just didn't want people to know, like, her sensationalist ways. But she was also, yeah, trying to... They have, there's a lot of parallels, but I feel like this chick's worse. Um, Athena, about this picture. See how it only shows the back of the subject? Ah, so then... Right, who knows if this photo shows Juniper in the first place? Hmm, a completely irrelevant point. How is it irrelevant? She just said she was led there by Juniper. What is relevant here is there was someone who did try to lead the witness to the body. Take a gander at this, the route by which the accused escaped. The witness pursued the accused this way after she fled the dressing room. The accused descended on the first floor and exited to the quad. Then what, carton cretin? Then I tripped and fell. Caught my knee on my own box. She stayed under her box even while running after someone? Sounds difficult. Recall that the body was already there, for Hugh O'Connor had already seen it. Or had he? I don't even know at this point. She was trying to show someone the body because she wanted to stop the mock trial. Hold it. Yeah, that's the th I don't- everything is irrelevant unless it works in his favor. Okay, I have to- Yep, oh, well... I mean, I guess I'll save the game. I was trying to do something else. No, I got it. Can't remember which button. Er, hold it! Okay, because it kind of sped past the things he said, and I thought it was more important. But the facts have changed, and that- and that's all the more reason to cross-examine the witness. Hmm, the defense has a point there. Very well, you may proceed with your cross-examination. Hmm, seems Justice Dono has saved your pretty little hide, Missy. For now, at least. Yeah, exact- well, that's the thing. Every prosecutor basically puts the judge in his place, and he's just like, oh no, like, he's scared of, like, half of them. And it's like, okay, cool. Just let them do whatever they want, because you're too scared to take them on, but shit all over everything I do. Whatever. Hmm, it seems Justice Donut has saved you. Oh, yeah. Whew, guess I pulled that off somehow. Thanks, Apollo, you're a lifesaver. Incidentally, my compliments to the witness for her very fine box. You can't just say that to a lady in the middle of a trial, Blackwill. It's Primo Cardboard, lovingly selected from among many. Gak! Tell another lie or hide another fact from me. And I shall put it to the torch. Cat, cat, please, anything but that. I think it would be more eco-friendly to recycle it, but that's just me. All right, Miss Sykes, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examination. 
What Scuttlebutt saw. Why would she change in that costume? The mock trial was about to begin. How should I know? But if you don't believe me, take a look at this photo. Well, I already know that's wrong because... I captured this critical moment like the gonzo journalistic pro that I am. Is that it? Is, is gonzo a term that people use all the time? I don't understand. But this only shows the back of whoever it was fleeing. You expect me to shoot her face when she's running away from me? I guess you're right, but... Yeah, it doesn't... Uh, anyway, this photo shows Juniper was in her stage costume. Except that's not her stage costume. Da, 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 da. Oops. I pressed that button. Uh, present. The stage costume... It, uh, is that? Objection. <laughs> Objection! Your Honor, members of the court, please look at this. That's right, there's no need to explain anything. This piece, never mind, apparently that was wrong. Wow, thanks. But it's the, this, that's not her fucking costume. It, this is the costume with the constellation and things. Really, okay, never mind, that's not how that works. Yeah, it's gotta be constant, yeah. It's completely different, but uh, fuck me, I guess. We're just gonna press stuff, I guess. You say you snuck in, but why would you do something like that? Because if I got a big scoop on Juniper Club, membership would go through the roof! Right now, the newspaper club has only one member, me! Club's history once I'm gone. Actually, wouldn't the club be history anyway? Because you can only- you have to have like a minimum of like five or six people or something? I don't know. So the theme is Harold's brand recognition as a matter of life or death. Her means may be questionable, but her motive is surprisingly sound. Extra, extra, students seeking the thrills and chills of expose journalism report to the club room. This has been a paid advertisement. Anyway, where was I? Okay. That doesn't mean you had to chase her. Call it journalistic instinct. I see something fishy, I go after it. But you never did catch up to her, did you? A true undercover journalist gets up and dusts herself off when she stumbles. That reminds me, didn't you fall during the chase? When you tripped on your box? A true undercover journalist is always ready to stumble over a great story. Sure are a lot of holes in your story. Or is that just the scuttlebutt brand of journalism? Cat, cat, cat! A true undercover journalist always prevails against her adversaries. Okay, well that didn't help me at all. Oh, this is where I was supposed to fucking present that. <sighs> On the pictures of her picture. Whatever the fuck. It should have, if honestly it should have been both statements because both statements involved the costume, but whatever. Miss Scuttlebutt's sole basis for identifying our client as the figure in this photo is the fact that she shows someone in Miss Wood's stage costume. Well, it is Juniper's costume, so that must be Juniper in it. It's clear cut. No, that's where you're completely mistaken. What? This is a design drawing of our client's stage costume. Oh my, what a wonderful creation! The constellations are extraordinary! I'm glad you noticed because those stars are precisely what's important here. In the drawing, there are constellations all over the outside of the costume. But there's not a single star on the costume in the photo. Oh, then that means, uh, what exactly? Your Honor, there were no other blue costumes at the scene. Which leads me to believe that the figure in the photo was wearing our client's costume inside out. <coughs> but why would Miss Woods make a mistake like that? Well, it's not really a matter of why, but rather who made the mistake of putting it on inside out? Cat, cat, wait, you're not suggesting. That's right, I'm glad you're catching on. The costume designer wouldn't put her own costume on inside out. Cat, 
Yeah, yeah, you just get fucked. Wow, why do you have so many protractors and things in there? Sorry, Miss Scuttlebutt, but doesn't believing you had a scoop when you really didn't make you a failure as a reporter? A f f failure as a reporter? <laughs> oh god, you're going crazy. What else is in there? A laptop? Oh no, your laptop! Oh no, she's actually cute! I hate it! No! Why, hello, Miss Scuttlebutt. So nice to meet the woman beneath the box. Cat, cat, cat. You, you didn't see nothing! Objection. Now, I would have you stop right there, Sykes Dono. For it is the why of the matter upon which I would have this court focus. What do you mean? Miss Juniper Woods. Yes? Oh, she's okay, she's out. She'd be a failure. Would be cause for an objection? Yeah, I guess so. It's like, does that pertain to the case? What were you doing on the morning of the mock trial? I was in my dressing room, <coughs> painting my costume in fluorescent paint. Fluorescent paint? My design drawing shows twinkling stars on the costume. <coughs> I was going to make the costume shimmer like that by painting the inside fluorescent. Fl what was that again? Fluoride? Did your costume have cavities? Not fluoride. Fluorescent as in glowing. The paint would make it glow in the dark. <coughs> Yes, yes, so you applied that to the inside of the costume. And then? Allergies, yeah, Junie is allergic to bullshit. I let it dry for a while because I heard it takes a long time. So I put the costume on my mannequin inside out. Inside out, so then? This is a photograph of the inside out costume taken in the dark. As you can see, there's a heavy layer of paint over the entire inside surface. If someone were to properly don this costume in this state, the wet paint would get all over their body. Why, yes, I believe it would. Maybe, I don't know how paint works. What's a cell phone? Indeed, ergo, the costume was worn the way it was, not by anyone's mistake. But because this was the way it was on the mannequin, inside out. Yeah! Okay. Couldn't anybody just put a blue sheet on and run then? Figures he would have a photo, dumb bastard. Uh, did we just fall into his trap? Yeah, I bet Blackwell had it all planned out. Still, I think you should give this photo a nice long look. Oh, please tell me you found something that doesn't add up. Check out the chest area. Looks kind of like a, like handprint to me. Hey, you're right. But Junie would know better than to touch it while paint was still wet. Objection. I believe the term to describe your thought process is wishful thinking. After all, if master painters make mistakes, why not a rank amateur such as the accused? Objection. So basically you're saying my claim requires evidence to back it up. Evidence? Hmm, that shouldn't be a problem, right? After all, you've come this far. Just because- Just because I've come this far doesn't mean I've thought everything through, though. What? You mean you've just been bluffing? What did you expect me to do? I'm sick of losing to this guy! But you're right, there's only thing, one thing left to do at this point. And that's to present some evidence, pronto! A showdown, is it? I gladly accept. Flares and paint must have stuck to the hands of whoever touched the costume and that paint should glow in dark places. So I just need to carefully check every last piece of evidence. Um. Uh. Shit. Yeah, I was about to say, turn the lights off. Yeah, master painters don't leave handprints on their works of art unless it was it. Yeah, exactly. It's like, dude, stop making parallels to things that make no sense. 
Okay, um... What the fuck am I supposed to show you? Because there's a hand. Okay. Got details. No. I'm trying to figure out if there's something I can, like, look closer at. Would it be the script? Because, well, she'd have to touch it. What the fuck? Uh No, seriously, I'm kind of at a loss. Uh is the handprint so somebody had like put it on the wrong way. What the fuck do you want me to do? Oh, God. Are we trying to see something where, like, somebody had touched it afterwards? I gotta see something. Laura sent a stuck to the hands of whoever touched the costume, and the paint should glow in dark places. Is it the paper, maybe? I don't know if you can, I don't know. Because it, 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 it's saying every last piece of evidence, so I don't think it's the one that I just got. Da, da, da. Oh, that's as far back as it goes. It doesn't load anymore back there. Okay, well, I think this calls for a save state. In case I fucking get this wrong, because I might just start throwing out evidence. Um. Because <clears throat> I don't know who. What? Well. Oh, wait. Maybe. Um. That? Ah, uh, well, I was assuming fingerprints. Uh, nope, okay. I thought we could pull the fingerprint, but I guess the paint wouldn't have fingerprints in it. Well, never mind. I don't... Because I'm pretty sure presenting that's not going to help. Phoenix, welcome! Thank you so much for the raid! How was your stream? I'm very confused right now. Uh... Oh! That! Okay, you know what? I saw that earlier, and I was like, what's wrong with his hand? Okay, present. He had it on. But hi! Welcome on in Phoenix, and everybody from Phoenix's stream. I hope you guys are doing great today. We are currently in the middle of Sleuthing Saturday, where I play Phoenix Wright games, and we are in the middle of Dual Destinies, and I am trying to figure out who killed a teacher. Yeah, it did work. Hi, how's it going, foe? Welcome on in. Of course it worked. No, 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 it, it probably just took a while. Sometimes it does that. Sometimes Twitch is dumb. I mean, a lot of times Twitch is dumb, but... Oh, you finished it? Nice! Congrats! I'm glad. But yeah, welcome on in, everybody. Today we're, we're deep in it. We're trying to figure out who done it. And I found out that I hate way more people in this game now because I... Every person I've run into, I'm like, man, I don't like them for one reason or another. But yeah, no, that's awesome. And now it's off your chest so you can worry about finishing other games like... Bayonetta and stuff. School newspaper? Interesting. Take a look at the photo where the lights are dimmed and the spotlight is on Miss Woods. Observe Mr. Newman's hand in that photo as he stands at the prosecutor's bench. As you can see, it's glowing just like Miss Woods' fluorescent paint. Hmm, it is glowing quite brightly, I might add. 
But why would he put fluorescent paint on his hand for the mock trial, you may ask? The answer is he wouldn't. Not on purpose. It got on there when he put the costume on. Oh, I, I mean, oh, that means, uh, what again? Hey, are you gonna show us a before and after RC? It means the figure photographed in the costume was not our client, Juniper Woods. It was her classmate, Robin Newman. What? Yeah. To think you were actually able to prove that. Well, you never know what's gonna happen next. That's the thrill of the courtroom. Hmm, so then... Oh, okay. Well... My apologies. Hmm, so then... Does that mean that Robin is our man? Hmm, well, that's certainly how it looks. Hmm, very well. Oh. He's here in the gallery, I trust. Show yourself, I challenge you to a duel. Okay, bring in... Hi! God, he still looks like he needs to shit real bad. Will the witness please state his name and occupation? I'm Robin Newman! I want to become a great artist. I practice every day and night. Yes! No, that's not it! Art's got to be sincere. So for occupation, should we put down budding artist? No! Themis Legal Academy Senior Prosecutor Course! The brace is proof of my masculinity. I've been training to be a prosecutor for 18 years! Um, <clears throat> I assume you'll be cleaning up the pottery you smashed before you leave today. Oh, man! Ah, oh, God! Hmm, it seems the witness has finally settled down. I guess nothing phases the judge after all these years. You may proceed with your testimony, Mr. Newman. Specifically, the court wishes to hear why you had fluorescent paint on your hand. God, and even his stance. <sighs> why I touched the costume. I went to see Juniper in her dressing room, but she wasn't there! When I walked by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa! The mannequin it was on, it was about to fall on me! I got that paint on me when I caught it! But I never put it on. That's just stupid. Wow, that's highly convenient. Your Honor, I recommend a short therapy session for the witness. Well, Mr. Newman does seem particularly agitated, but... Dog! 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 No! Not again. What's his problem? I sensed it the moment Robin took the stand. The discord in his heart. Do you think he might be hiding something? Probably. You ready, Mr. Newman? Let's see what the mood matrix can do for you. Boop. 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 Boop, boop, boop. That's how I open all my programs. I draw a smiley face on the screen. Okay. Yeah? But she wasn't there! When I went by that frilly costume, I was like, whoa! The mannequin... It was on! It was about to fall over! I got that paint on me when I caught it! I never put it on! That's just stupid! Okay, well... Well, he's so angry. I don't know, maybe the happiness? I, well, I, uh, I mean, maybe that's not weird, but I, I want to pinpoint it anyway, just in case. Oh, shit. Is it, well, those are the only ones I can do. Got it! When you mentioned the stage costume, I sensed a sudden powerful feeling of joy. Would you care to explain? Explain, Mr. Newman? I guess the joy would have kept going throughout just because it's like, oh, this is really cool. What? 
why would a frilly scarf thing and a long skirt make me feel that? Are you... Are you actually a... Is Robin Newman a girl? I feel like Robin Newman might be... Maybe that's why they're training so hard. Are you... I don't know, but you seem awfully interested in that costume for some reason. You didn't happen to put it on, did you? Yeah, no, that's... I'm like, hmm. Like, I'd be into that kind of thing. I I'm a dude. I'm into braces, not dresses. You don't think Robin likes girl clothes, do you? <coughs> oh, come on. Isn't it obvious? You're enjoying this a bit too much, Athena. No way, man! The mannequin came uh, falling toward me, so I stuck in my hand to stop it. End of story. That's a new piece of information. Time to run an update. <coughs> Mm-hmm. Hmm, even after that update, something just doesn't feel right here. Do I have anything that could prove the statement contradicts? Oh, because of the way the hands... Because it's like the thumb. You said the mannequin came falling towards you, so you stuck your hands out to stop it. If so, then the fingers on your hands would have been pointing outward, like this. But that's not what the handprints show. In fact, this looks more like it's just your thumbs and the base of your palms. But why in the world would I leave such weird handprints? I mean, it, it kind of... Because they're trying really hard to seem manly and stuff, but they, they are quite androgynous, to be fair, looking at them, compared to other bro. But why in the world would I leave such weird handprints? You know why? You left them when you went to adjust the scarf after putting it on. Just like in the model in this drawing. Whoa! I don't know, we'll have to see Disturbed Lady. Like, I'm just making conjecture right now uh, based on what I'm seeing in the reactions and things. Why don't you just admit it, Mr. Newman? You did put the stage costume on, didn't you? And you really do like frilly clothes, don't you? Fine, I admit to putting the costume on, but I don't like girly clothes, man! That barely <laughs> scratched the surface. Yes, new information to plug in. Time for another update. Uh, my heart was pounding, even though I'm a guy. Um, Happy surprise. Oops, that's not what I wanted. Welcome back. Like, why were you scared, though? There, another emotion that doesn't fit. Yeah, sad. that's why I'm, like, sad? Oh, probably because she wasn't there? So what, you're really starting to get on my nerves, man! I mean, we might- I don't know. I Yeah, like, with all this stuff going on. Mr. Newman, you got excited when you put the costume on, but you also felt sad? Oh, who cares if I felt sad? It's no big deal! Okay, Mr. Newman, out with it. Why did you feel sad? You're hiding something, aren't you? Oh, no! You're not fooling anyone anymore. Now tell us why you were sad. Okay, fine! If you're gonna be like that, I'll tell you! The reason I felt sad is... 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 No matter how much I dress up, I'll never be as pretty as Juniper! Well, no offense, but for one thing, he's a guy and a real hothead at that. But what if you're not a guy? No, that's not it. I totally own those girly clothes. I should have been totally pretty. But, but there's something that keeps getting in my way. Or are you just, just, you just like, wow, there's a whole lot of anger and raw emotion right there. His heart is crying out in pain. His emotions are out of control. Out of control emotions. We saw those during the Nine Tails Veil incident. So all we have to do is find the source of his uncontrollable anger, right? Right, help me look for a conflict between his statements and the images we see. If we can find that, we can wrestle him away from whatever's tormenting him. Mr. Newman said that there's something getting in the way of him being pretty. Something that doesn't go with girly clothes, but what could it be? <laughs> Fine, I'll testify, man! Five percent? How many fucking things? Jesus. Oh, whoa. 
Whoa! I snuck in knowing the costume was in there. My heart was pounding even though I'm a guy. It's true, I felt a powerful feeling when I saw that long frilly scarf. I admit it, I wore girly clothes. I felt like a diva when I pulled the hood over my head. I felt, it felt so right. I was totally dressed up like a girl. Okay. Where's the variance? You think it's the second one? But I already, I, I already went, this is one of the ones that I already thought I went over. Damn, this is... Was under a stinky. You know what, I'm kinda gonna try, like, we're gonna try this one. Or, oh, wait. What's causing anger? Maybe the brace? Oh, there's more! There's bullying in the chat, it's fine. Wait, what is happening? Is it, is it the probe? Mr. Newman, you feel a great deal of anger towards your brace, don't you? Is that what you feel is holding you back from being as pretty as you think you should be? Huh? What, what? What? That's... Oh my god, is that not only a brace, but like... Oh god. Take it off! Take it off! Mr. Newman, the truth is you really want to take that brace off, don't you? And in no way, man! It's a symbol of masculinity! I, I could never take it off! Is it that you can't take it off, or that you don't want to take it off? Uh, man, I should have kept my big mouth shut! This is really weird. He exhibits intense anger towards his brace, which he calls a symbol of masculinity, but he can't take it off even when dressing like a girl? Why is he so interested in girls' clothes in the first place? I have a feeling, yeah, I think that, oh God. What if he's actually a girl that likes Junie, but doesn't want to like, has to act like a dude because maybe feels that it's wrong to like other girls? I don't know, but I, I this is a lot of con conjecture, but it, there's a lot going on. Yeah, we're about to uncover a secret. Athena, you okay? It seems Robin is hiding a secret, a big one. Bigger than the fact that he likes to wear girls' clothes? Yes, at least I think so. <gasps> no, it, it can't be. I just thought of something, but it's totally insane. That Robin's a girl? Miss, Mr. Newman, what? what? I'm onto your little secret, and if I'm correct, it's not very little at all. It's huge. This sounds completely insane, but it's the only possibility left. You're a girl! Suppose, yeah, there's trauma, exactly. Mr. Newman, or should I say Ms. Newman, you are, and always have been, a girl. What? Have you lost your plot, Athena? <coughs> no, I'm completely serious. I don't have any direct evidence, but that's what Robin's heart is shouting out loud and clear. Hold it. I still think you've totally lost it. I mean, Robin reeks of testosterone. How could he possibly be a she? Wow, Apollo, going off of outward appearances like a fucking asshole. I, for one, have never seen a girl who shouts like a maniac all the time. Well, Apollo, you only know like five girls and they're all crazy. Oh, uh, <laughs> I've seen plenty of witnesses in my day, but if he's a she, then she's the most convincing actress I've ever encountered. A judge, you're also 50 million years old. Wow, <laughs> Marcy, <laughs> you just outed yourself. Therefore, let me pronounce my verdict. Robin Newman is without a question a man. That's not your fucking place to decide, judge. Oh, uh, oh, 
You are now truly Justice Dono's equal in one area. You are just as equally insane. Never in the history of this planet has there been a finer specimen of the masculine spirit. What is wrong with all of them? <laughs> Hold it! Take it off! Take it off! That, that sounds terrible in the context. And so, they don't like the brace. Ah! If you guys are done talking about me, I'm I'm. <laughs> what is this, Naruto? Bonk. Now we're gonna go beat up Gara. Ah, the brace, it's... Oh, hi, ah, she's adorable. Ah. Ah. Uh, Miss Sykes, no, allow me to call you uh, Athena. I wanted to keep this a secret at all costs, but no. What? No way! Ah! Oh no! You thought you think she's hot, but you also thought she was a dude. You have very confused penises right now. Yeah, Rockley took off the bracers. Shit's gonna get real. Sh 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 surely this must be some kind of jest. <laughs> nope, it's for real. I'm a girl, body and soul. If you don't believe me, I'll give you a peek. Oh, Robin, no! Die! As if. <laughs> Robin, why? What an amazing transformation. Well, all the Discord, Discord is gone. The image is now complete. Ah, ha, ha! Well, there we go. We took care of that. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Widget. I was raised as a boy since I was little, and I studied law just as my parents want. I knew it. Fucking. Ah, oh, what is wrong with parents? But now this living lie had me pinned to the ground. It's. Ah! Uh, uh. It's been blown to smithereens by you, Athena. Now I can stop pretending I want to be a prosecutor. I'm going to be an artist. Yeah. Yay! Actually, I'm gonna add. Beautiful for quote 163. There's actually a lot more quotes than that, but I have to transcribe the rest of them. I, 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 you know what the funny thing is, I think anybody who's played Dual Destinies will probably understand what I'm talking about, but everybody else will not. What a shocking development. He really did turn out to be a she. <coughs> Why is everyone looking at me like that? Teehee, I feel like a movie star or something. But no paparazzi, please. I value my privacy. Okay. Ah, no pixel, you'll regret it, man. Am I just imagining things, or is Robin even more hyper now than when she was a he? I don't know. Maybe it's because she finally got uh, her troubles off her chest. Literally. This is all well and good, but uh, how does he being a she actually change anything? <clears throat> the fact that the witness is actually a girl does change things, because there's now a piece of evidence that we must reevaluate! Ah! I know which piece it is. Yeah. Yes! Girl voice saying I'm going to kill you because you stumbled on the secret. This is what I'd like the court to reconsider. Oh, the tape recorder. The one that recorded the threat, you're a goner. That's right. And we have already established that it's a female voice in the recording. Of all the students who could have moved the body before the mock trial was to start... Our client was the only female, if you exclude Ms. Scuttlebutt because of her alibi. And that is that is why the tape recorder made our client a prime suspect. Ah, so then. That's right, the witness just revealed that she's a girl. Therefore, 
If we are using the voice in this recording as the basis for hurling accusations, this witness must be labeled as a suspect too. Oh. Oh no! Oh no, Robin, please don't cry. Oh, Robin. Wow, talking about a sudden turn of events. You've done it. You found a hole in one of the prosecution's key pieces of evidence. Yeah, but wow, that was a lot of work for a single one. Not so hasty now. You're forgetting that only one person here was privy to the script. Ergo, Miss Juniper Woods is still the prime suspect. But Miss Newman hid the fact that she was a girl both at the crime scene and in court. I'd say that puts her in camp suspicious. Eek! That's not nice, Athena. How can you accuse me of being a killer? I mean, I'm just a weak, innocent little girl. Just thinking about that murder makes me... <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Uh, well, apparently the recording quality was really bad, so all they know is that it's a female voice, but they can't actually use the voice analyzer. Yeah. Hmm. Suspicious is as suspicious does. Undoubtedly, the witness does have some sort of connection to the crime. Perhaps our newfound lady is merely feigning ignorance. We can surmise that she lent support to the principal offender, Juniper Woods, by leading Miss Scuttlebutt to the body that would make her an accessory to the crime. How can you say that? I'm not an accessory to any crime, Mr. Birdman. Objection. Ah, yes. Birdman, attorney at law. B Birdman? And in any event, the witness as an accessory explains quite a bit, does it not? He made it all make sense somehow. God damn it, Athena. Don't object if you're just going to make a stupid face. He'll keep accusing Junie unless we can show someone else knew the script's details. But how could someone else have gotten their hands on that kind of info? The only way they could know knew the script is if they... <coughs> had penned the script. Heard it from Junie. But Junie was the one who penned the script. So I'm going to assume I heard it from Junie. Okay, well, the thingy went away. Sorry, Junie, but you're not going to like this. Our client may have leaked the script's details to someone. What the devil? And I know I shouldn't have, but I revised the script to favor the prosecution. But Professor Court noticed it immediately and changed it back. Ms. Woods did not want Hugh O'Connor to win the mock trial. That's why I believe she leaked the details to the witness, Robin Newman. <coughs> I get it. If Robin won, Hugh wouldn't be able to confess to Juniper. Right, Junie was probably trying to keep their friendship from becoming awkward. How could you, Thena? What a bunch of bull! I, I, I never heard a word about the script from Juniper. Never, ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, Aristotle might have known. You sure? Can you look me in the eye and swear you didn't? But, uh, oh. Bad, Athena. You don't have any evidence! Stop swooning, Robin. Come on. You can only use your cuteness for so long before it gets tiring. Actually, we might have just the thing. Really? Yeah. One of Robin's lines I read when we were reenacting the mock trial. Here's a shot of the crime scene. Ironically, it was Professor Court who posed as the corpse. Air forehead, how did the mock trial participants react to the photo? Yeah, okay, Mr. Newman was surprised by what- Oh, so there, this is the revised edition, probably. <coughs> Robin said, oh, the green sweatsuit. Sure, I might have said that, but so what? Well, think of it this way, Athena. Yeah, uh, which way exactly? If I told you I'd be wearing a blue suit today, but then showed up wearing what I've got on now, what would you say? Um, oh, the red suit. Ah, I think I've got it. <coughs> Your Honor, we have evidence proving that Ms. Newman knew the contents of the script. The defense moved to present said evidence to court. 
Very well, Miss Sykes, present away. Yeah, I well, I guess that's what happens when you have to basically like save face in front of your parents and then be able to act normal other places, which is actually a frightening number of my friends that have to do shit like that, which is not fun. Thankfully, I had parents that were pretty much just let me do whatever as long as I wasn't dying or endangering anybody. But some people's parents are kind of restricted. Yeah. Very well, Miss Sykes, present away. The evidence proves that Ms. Newman had prior knowledge to the script. Is it, is it in there? Yeah, habits, habits. <clears throat> red sweatsuit, it's that red! Sorry. Present it! The mock trial script. Mm-hmm. Ms. Newman, during the mock trial, you were shown a photo of the victim's body. All right, Ellie, you have a good one. Thank you so much for stopping by again. I hope that this time you can get to sleep, especially since I know it's already, it's already morning there, and I hate that for you, and I'm sorry, but sleep well. And reportedly, you reacted by saying, oh, the green sweatsuit. Oh, um, yes, I said that. What's your point? You seem to have some issue with the green sweatsuit, and I think I know why. The proof is in the script, specifically on the things to prepare page. Sweatsuit. Victim's outfit will be a red one from the prosecutor's prosecutor course. Ah, you were surprised because the sweatsuit in the photo was green. But if you didn't know about the script's content, then that shouldn't have surprised you! N no! Oh man, is this four or five? I don't even know. I thought we were friends, Athena! How could I have been so blind? In light of our privileged knowledge, I move to declare Miss Newman a suspect, Your Honor. You what? It's three? I don't know, it feels like way more. If knowing the script details makes me a suspect, then there must be others besides me. I mean, someone else could have also seen Professor Quartz's notes. Note? What note? The professor and Juniper were working together to prepare the mock trial. But only one copy of the script was made to prevent it from being leaked. But that gets kind of inconvenient, right? You're not seriously going to suggest. Eek, <laughs> but it's the truth. Court did do exactly what you're thinking. She didn't write down any of the proceedings of the truth behind the case. But she did write a note to herself about the prop details in the victim's body. I is this really true, Miss Newman? If you don't believe me, send the police over to my house. Tell them to check the pictures on my camera. I thought it might give me an advantage. So I took a picture of that note. I'd say she's telling the truth. Wait a sec. If there's a note with details about the body, then that means there are others who could have made the murder look like our client's script. Yes, I believe you're right. Like, I don't know, like the evil teacher man? <clears throat> Apparently, this case isn't as clear cut as Prosecutor Blackwell would have us believe. This new revelation blasts a big fat hole in the prosecution's case. Oh, -ho! sink his battleship. Bully for you, Missy, but I uh, don't think this spells victory. And why not? The battle is still young and my blade is now fully drawn. Is, is that, does he have like a prosecutor boner right now? Is that, is that like prosecutor speak? I don't know. Sir, we're children, please. Between it and my next witness, your life will be forfeit. So put away your wooden sword. And show me what you are truly capable of if you wish to live. Yeah. 
You want it? Don't worry, I'm gonna bring it. No, not after what I just said. Oh. Oh, it's this dumb fuck. Oh, boy. I already said I wanted nothing to do with this trial. How juvenile. It is not a matter of what you want, for you will cooperate, Hugh O'Connor. My fully drawn sword is here. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, I'm probably going to end soonish ish I was kind of hoping I'd finish this day of the trial first, but it's dragging on so long. Prosecutor Blackwell, why have you called this witness? You will recall that the day before the mock trial, in short, the day of the murder, the accused testified that he she left for home around 6 p.m. Yes, my notes do uh, confirm that. Right, her client wasn't at school in the estimated time of death, so she couldn't be. Yet that was but a felicitous lie, or am I mistaken, golden boy? I've no intention of saying anything more. Now, if you'll excuse me. Hold! I am not through with you yet! It seems the rogue prosecutor has it out for me. Leave, and we might just discuss... You know what? Back! No, 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 wait! One little statement and Mr. Cool loses it? What's this all about? I changed my mind. I'll stay and testify. Hmm, are you sure, Mr. O'Connor? Heh, <laughs> the word of a genius is as good as gold. Let's get on with this. Hugh O'Connor, a senior at Themis Legal Academy, lawyer course. How's that? Uh, just fine. Your testimony then, if you please. You're up against the top of the line class now. I'd be careful if I were you. I know Junie would never lie like that. That pompous schoolboy won't know what hit him. Okay. What do we got? Around the time of the murder. To get mentally prepared for the mock trial, I meditated at the archery range until 7 p.m. At around 7.15, I went to the main building before going home. That's when I saw Juniper. We didn't say much as we passed by each other. She seemed her usual self. That's it. Anything else you'd like to ask? Wow, that's... That is quite enough. Well done, golden boy. Heh. The final bell rings at 7 p.m., at which point the campus is a desolate place. Now, you will recall the tape recorder. We know the time of the voice recording. It was 7.10 p.m., the day before the mock trial. That was the dark hour of this heinous crime. D do you have any proof of that? As it final bell, the school plays a special broadcast when the clock strikes seven. The female voice of that tape appears ten minutes after that broadcast. The killer waited until the school was empty to spring her devious and deadly trap. Okay. <laughs> so when the witness saw the defendant, that would have been... Indeed, it was five minutes after the voice was captured on the tape in the art room. Ergo, we know that the accused was still in the main building, even after the killing. Wait, it's your back? Wait, what happened? Like, you mean the directory that the games go in? Or are you talking about, like, you're looking for games for the emulator? Because if you need anything, Phoenix, just let me know, and I can get that figured out for you. Also, welcome back with ramen. I've got quite a few already, and I can always, I can always find more for you. Because thankfully, those work, I mean, they work with any emulator. The ROMs don't really matter too much. What? It's okay. I'm saying this on record, too. This is going to YouTube. I don't care. It's fine. I'm going to help my friends out. Cancel me if you must. I mean, come on. I'm playing this on... It does? Well, it seemed like it was working all right uh, the other day. I think the only issue you had was the microphone, right? Yeah, even after the killing. Hmm. So the time of the murder and the time of the body was moved. Yeah, I mean, that's 100% true. Great. Another inconvenient testimony. Miss Sykes, your cross-examination, please. I mean, I could. It's kind of a big file, though. 
I mean, I'm probably I because I, I had something up uh, on my Google um my Google Drive for my friend Anna. I gotta check and see. I might I might do that again and have that up there. Just so I'll be like, if people want whatever, just download it from here. Yeah, that's why I put um that thing on the side. It also works really well for this because of the fact that these screens aren't that big. So I have all this space. So over here is where they can see everybody talking. So that way I don't look like a crazy person who's responding to nothing. You know, around the time of the murder. Press. So, um, do you meditate often? Heh. <laughs> Don't tell me you're gonna start pestering me, too. What's that supposed to mean? No need to play dumb with me. All the girls want to know about my private life. Wow, this guy is so full of himself. <coughs> what? I will remind the defense this is a court of law, not a- I wasn't trying- Fuck you, judge! Hmm. Seems Miss Fancy Pants lawyer spitting with the witness. I fucking hate them. Objection! Ugh. Objection! 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 I'm just trying to st- Ugh. If you must know, I never go a day without meditating. Satisfied now, stalker girl? Ah, uh, I'm gonna fucking kill all of you. Whoa, whoa there, tiger. Just take a deep breath and relax. I'll just continue my testimony now, if you don't mind. Around 7.15, oh yeah. So you just walked past a good friend barely saying a word? The final bell had already rung. They get mad when you stand around chatting. Then again, we're not like you people talking endlessly in those annoyingly loud voices. Objection. My voice is not annoyingly loud! I'd like it if you refrain from insulting my partner like that. Wow. Normally I'd shout objection right about now, but I'll take this one for the team. Poor Apollo. <laughs> anyway, I think that's about all I have to say. Wow, so he's just gonna dodge a lot of things. I bet I have to press this one. All right, I'll take you up on your kind offer. I expected as much, so go ahead. Ask away. I want to ask you. How did you prep for the rock? Please tell the court what you were doing on October 23rd, the day before the mock trial. Heh, <laughs> that's an easy one. Nothing in particular. Nothing at all? You didn't help with the preparations? Heh, <laughs> you don't get it, do you? I was merely playing the role I was assigned. I left the preparations and all to the others. My job was to be mentally prepared. I don't work with peasants. Juni put her heart and soul into getting things ready while he just sat on his behind. Just to reiterate, I spent most of the 23rd meditating at the archery range. I didn't talk to anyone until the school closed at 7 p.m. I suppose a few archery club members did come and go while I sat there. But you didn't talk to anyone? Not a single soul? That's right, I didn't say a word to anyone till the final bell at 7 p.m. I see, this, this is crucial information. Please add it to your testimony. I don't know if you're bluffing, but if you are, you have a pretty good poker face. Yeah. I've been meditating alone at the archery range, okay. Hold it again! You really didn't talk to anyone? Well, I did exchange a few greetings, but what does that matter? So he didn't have any conversations the entire day. Methinks that claim needs a little more scrutiny, but what should I do? Is there anything I should ask about in more detail? Oh yeah. Why would an honor student like you ignore the last bell? I wouldn't say ignored it, I was simply running a little late. Do you remember exactly how late? <laughs> you're a stickler for details, lady. But if I had to say it was maybe mm, about 10, 15 minutes late. If you think that's important, I'll add it to my testimony. 
I was hoping you'd say that. Dun, dun. Uh, so keep, we just keep like going further. Ignore the last bell for no reason. Shame on you. No, shame on you pressing me for no reason. Ugh. Well, people do run late sometimes, like you on the day the whole case began. Ah! It appears we have a culprit in the case of the pot calling the kettle black. A uh, two, your honor? Hmm, now what? Ask another question? Did you go to the art room? Did you stop by the art room, or as it's now known, the scene of the crime? No, I didn't. Can you prove it? As much as I'd like to say I could, I can't. But let me ask you, can you prove that I did? As much as I'd like to say I could, I, I can't. But I will ask, how often do you visit there? Hardly ever. There's no reason for me to be there anyway. There's no reason for you to be there? Is there an echo in here? If something's bothering you, I'll just add it to my testimony. How considerate. Thank you for noticing. Let's add the statement to your testimony. God, I hate this. Can we get to the fucking point? There's no reason for me to be there. Let's press this one, I guess. Like, Jesus, I don't know. You had no reason to be in the art room. Really? Like, it's just the same fucking thing over and over. Oh my god. The lawyer course I'm in is supervised by Professor Means. Plus, I'm not a member of Professor Court's art club, so why would I even go there? What about art class? Hmm, nice try, but seniors don't take art class. All right, then let me ask you. Wait, I just remembered something important. You did? I scored only 100% on all the art tests I took through junior year. That's it. I fucking hate you. Right, always happy to indulge in some ego stroking. <coughs> okay. I don't think there's any more questions. I already asked a lot. Did I, though? Hmm. Where the f- Like, there's- I don't know, actually. Like, what fucking statement. Uh <laughs> Wait, is it the planner? Wait, let me look at the planner. Oh, uh, with Hugh. Oh yeah. You're right! Shit, I- No, that's the wrong one! I have to go to the one where he said he talked to nobody! Ah, oh, shit! Ass titties! Sorry, I fucked up. No credit for trying. You wasted effort reward. Thank you. Sorry. It's probably gotta be at- At the first one. Yeah, okay, yeah, it, it's gotta be at the first one. Da, da. No, it's not the, what the fuck? Yeah, okay, never mind. Okay, well, I'm gonna fucking die. Why is it? Do I have to present it at his? Like, I thought there was more than one thing. <sighs> uh, 
Okay, so I mean, I have to talk to him about... Because I thought it added all the other fucking statements, but I gotta fucking ask him a question again. And I didn't think I could present here. Like, does it just swap out the statements? Uh... It literally swaps out the fucking statements. I hate that. Why did I go through all that bullshit and get all this dumb fucking extra information that I did not fucking need? Uh, that's really stupid. Fuck you. So you didn't talk to anybody on October 23rd? Are you sure about that? Hm. I already told you my word is as good as gold. Okay, then how do you... Then how do you explain this? How do you explain this, Athena? Do you know how to English? And don't spare any details. Sorry, never seen that before. This is the victim's planner. She recorded all of her plans in great detail. Take a look at the page here. It reads, 23rd, meet with Hugh and important. Don't you find that interesting? What? Where did you get that? The keyword here is important. You say you were at the archery range all day, but you also said a few students came and went while you were there. That doesn't sound like a great place for an important talk. But the entire campus was buzzing with activity before the mock trial. Where could they have possibly had a private conversation? I thought about that too, but the situation changes after the last bell. What's this now? The witness stayed after the last bell in order to have a private talk with the victim. Am I right, Mr. O'Connor? This is insane! Hmm. Must we go through this yet again? I suppose you also have no evidence, as usual. No, I don't have any direct evidence. However, the witness was meditating until after the last bell, and he attempted to conceal his private meeting with the victim. Hm. First Robin, now me. Who are you going to accuse next? You're just another unscrupulous attorney looking to get ahead. Don't let him get to you. He's definitely hiding something. I mean, he was supposed to meet with the victim around the, her estimated time of death. I had my suspicions about Robin, but... Hugh seems just as guilty. These are three are the only possible suspects after all. Uh, what about fucking... Dix McGee Aristotle Means? Mr. O'Connor, answer me this. Did you meet with Professor Court that day? <sighs> Sorry, Miss J Mr. Jailbird Bird Prosecutor. I don't mean to steal your thunder, but I have something to say. If it will save me some trouble, then by all means, speak away. If you would recall, Miss Sykes, the voice on the tape recorder, was female. Knowing that, I'd like to explain how I could possibly be a suspect. Oh, he has a point. Hm, impressive, Golden Boy here does shine gold indeed. Get to take the reins? You're more than capable of prosecuting this case. Shut up, Blackwell! Hm. Sorry, but I'm studying to be a lawyer. What a pity to think such genius is wasted on mere lawyering. <laughs> At last, your moment is here, Sykes Dono. Time to refute Golden Boy's statement and prove they're the young prodigy worthy of the badge on your label. Your Connor sounds a lot like Hugh O'Connor. It rhymes, maybe. Ugh. Could he lay any more pressure on? Plus, they did say it wasn't very... It, you couldn't really understand it. The voice is unmistakably female, so there's no point in arguing about that. Yeah, you're right. In which case... To whom does the voice on the tape really belong to? The victim. The voice on the tape belongs to the victim. That's the only thing that makes sense. Are you mad? The voice on the recording says you're a goner. That is something. A murderer shouts at their victim, not the other way around. 
Hmm. Yeah, that's a problem. You're a goner. You're a goner. You're a goner. Um, Athena? You're a goner. You're a goner. Hugh a corner. Hugh O'Connor. Wait a second! Whoa, Athena, you're scaring me here. You're scared? I'm terrified for even coming up with this. With what? Prosecutor Blackwill, you wanted to know if I am worthy of my badge. Well, I'm about to show you why, despite my age, I'm able to proudly wear this at all. Oh, then you, uh, I take it, then can I take it you won't be changing your argument? Still, it stands that it's a bit odd for the victim to be the one yelling, you're a goner. I agree, if that's what the victim was saying, but it's not. Hmm, I assume you have something to back up your assertions, Miss Sykes. Not exactly, but you don't have to add fuel to his fire, Your Honor. If it is indeed Professor Court's voice on the tape, then she was shouting because she was... Threatening, being thr- Why are there three different fucking options for this? Scolding? Threatened? Routine report, need to speak. <sighs> Scolding? Being threatened by? Man, this is gonna kill me no matter what. Yeah, so we're gonna... Yeah, I don't think there was threat. I feel, I feel like she's scolding him. I would like to call one basic fact into question. Is that shout on the tape really saying you're a goner? Someone threatening you, you don't shout their name. I mean, not usually, yeah. Usually, you're the one shouting their name when they're in trouble. What are you up to now, Athena? Professor Court's planner says she was supposed to meet with the witness for an important talk. <coughs> Perhaps our witness, despite being a genius, had done something wrong. And this made Professor Court get angry with him during their private meeting. I don't see how this changes what we heard on the tape. Well, if you want to see how it changes things, let's try a little experiment. Your Honor, I want you to yell at the witness as if you're mad at him. But, and this is important, use his full name. <clears throat> okay, let's see, um, Hugh O'Connor. Eh, what did I do to deserve that? Yes, like that. Now try again, but faster. Uh, Hugh O'Connor. Hmm? Hugh O'Connor? Hugh O'Connor. Hugh O'Connor? Wait a second. No, no, this can't be. Oh, but it is! You think I'd spend the energy to lead you this far if it wasn't true? Ah, oh, but it is, Your Honor. Humans are not perfect. That's scientific fact. We sometimes mistake shadows for monsters, or the wind for voices. Hmm, now that you mention it. <sighs> Whoa, wow, really, Twitch? Man, I never knew that. You can do this, Athena. Just give the old guy one more little push. The voice on the tape recorder never was you're a goner. That's only what we thought we heard when in fact it was the witness getting yelled at. Yeah, it's been four and a half hours. Twitch is dumb. That's why I advertise on other things because I know Twitch isn't always helpful. The court will hear this, that this is different from the selective hearing men are so good at. I think you're right, but what was that last part again? Never mind, the important thing is that the voice that was recorded isn't our clients. And since it was the victim scolding the witness, he must now join the list of suspects. Guard! Hmm, I had thought that that testimony would suffice, but it seems it has come to this. I will not allow such fallacious quibbles to upend this case. What about your bullshit, Black Quill? Anyway, yeah, yeah, probably. The prosecution has one final piece of evidence to present to the court. <laughs> evidence? What's he gonna pull out now? Feast your eyes on this photo and let me see that insolent look vanish from within them. Excuse me. 
Let's see here. Oh, it's a picture of the defendant and the victim. The photograph shows professor and student preparing for the mock trial together. Wait, what's this taken in the art room? The room where the murder occurred? Indeed it was, but the revelations do not end there. Do you see the clock on the wall? It reads 70 or it reads 705, a mere 5 minutes before the voice was recorded on the tape. What what? The accused brutally stabbed the victim to death five minutes after this photo was taken. Photo of the art room. Yeah, okay. But he already said he passed her by and then he met with the teacher. Hmm. It seemed the defendant's culpability in this crime is quite obvious. Even he was with Professor Court just five minutes before she was murdered? What now? Nothing I say can change that fact. But that doesn't mean she fucking murdered her. Yeah, who was taking the photo, exactly. Hmm. Understand now? You can believe in your client. I'll wish... what? I'll... what? I don't know. But try as you might, such misplaced faith will inevitably be cut down before the cruel, steely blade of the truth. Yeah! Listen, Missy, the person you'd like to save more than anything else in the world, I'd be willing to wager that your defense isn't what they desire. But, but, but I became a lawyer so I could... You still fail to understand after so much pain and defeat. The courts are not the play yards of little children dressed as lawyers. So before you break your back in failure, run along home and grow up. <laughs> Quickly, kill him. He thinks I'm giving up now. He's got another thing coming. I have to find my inner strength if I ever hope to save him. I can't think of any way to strike back. The worst of times are when lawyers have to force their biggest smiles. That's impossible! I gotta smile under these circumstances, even if I forced it. This is badder than bad. Who knew Blackwell had that one waiting in the wings? Why didn't that twisted samurai just present it at the beginning? Because he fucking loves making people suffer. Wait, maybe that was his real plan. Was he just trying to show me how weak and powerless I am? Maybe he's right, because I really haven't got a clue. Thank you for the water, RC. Oh, and a strat. Wait, is- oh wait! Okay, people of YouTube can't see that, but they redeemed me drinking water and stretching. Ugh. It just doesn't show up in the chat because I think I told it not to. Oh, oh, that actually feels pretty good. Yeah, who murdered Professor Constance? Robin Newman, a girl who had been forced to live a lie as a guy? Or was it Hugh O'Connor, the honor student who had met with Professor Court? There seems to be little reason to debate the defendant's guilt any longer. The time for a verdict has come. Oh no, RC! Oh, I wish I had seen that! Hello? No, it's not gonna happen, man! What's the meaning of this? You can't interrupt a judge when he's about to hand down a... Tee hee hee! Maybe, but false verdicts are a no no! What? Miss Newman, please explain yourself! Juniper's not the killer! I know because. because I know who the real killer is! You do? You know who the real killer is? What's she up to now? That's not. okay, never mind. That's definitely a dick, but let's not worry about that. Yep, I know because the real killer is me. Me. <laughs> no, Robin. Bad Robin. Uh, what? It was me. I did it alone. Just me. <laughs> I don't get it. Why is she confessing? Hmm. Miss Newman was witnessed near the stage. There's even a related photo of her. 
The more I think about it, the more suspicious she seems. Yeah, because you just, you fall to the power of suggestion every time, Judge. Robin Newman isn't the kind of guy who pins blame on friends. Just so he can walk free. Get it over with, declare me guilty already. Oh. <laughs> Please, wait. Juniper, what are you doing? Thank you for all you've done, Thena, but you'll have to forgive me. I can't let my friends take the blame any longer. Juni, no! Don't do it! Hughes and Robin have done nothing wrong. They have absolutely no connection to this case. The real killer is me. I alone am a- Shut the fuck up! What? What? what what Junie, you know that's not true. Hurry up and retract your statement. I'm afraid it is true. Forgive me, Athena. What the fuck? What was the point of this whole two fucking hours of this shit? If she's just gonna show up on there and fucking be like, it's me. Order, order. Will someone please explain what's going on? Yeah, she she's fucking lying. I see right through your cheap play. School rules state that a prior conviction terminates one's eligibility to graduate. A guilty verdict here would make whatever dreams one had go up in a puff of smoke. Oh, I wasn't aware. Even meek little mice will fight when cornered. A pitiful spectacle, I might add. These vermin are trying to protect each other now that they've nowhere else to run. Protect each other? Wait! So was Robin just trying to protect Junie too? Yeah, obviously. If so, then the real killer is the one who's a jackass and doesn't care about anyone. <coughs> oh, no, now he- Oh, come on. Hey, this whole thing's a joke. I'm the real killer. What? What is wrong with kids these days? I know what just crossed your mind, Miss Sykes. Hey! You think I'm the killer, don't you? You're not allowed to have a loaded bow in court, I think. He really is a genius. He even knows what you're thinking. <laughs> it's about time I told you the truth. And I'll even get right to the point. It was me. I did it. Wait, what? <laughs> God. Oh, I hate this. Wow, let's put them all in jail. Just do it. Fuck them, kids. Ah. <sighs> Now both potential suspects are claiming to be the real killer. I'm so confused right now. If you still have doubts, how about I detail my murder plot? It's absolute genius. Enough of this nonsense. This is a court of law, not a set of some high school drama. Well, I'm not the killer. You guys can all go to jail. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Not about that prison life, thanks. See, I have no choice. I'm afraid I'll have to... Holy, wait your boldness. I'm sorry, Prosecutor Blackwell, but I'm in no position to hand down a verdict just yet. I am hoping the defense and prosecution can come up with some airtight evidence. That is why I'm giving you both the rest of the day to continue investigating this case. Pinch me, I think I'm dreaming. <laughs> Fine, do as you wish. This brings today's proceedings to a close. Court is adjourned. Yeah, well, maybe you guys should have thought about it before you got stuck deep in a murder plot. I didn't tell you guys to do that. Okay, holy shit. That was just... Uh, there's two hours for trial part one, which... Didn't really help us out that much, but we did it for now. So that's, that's today. That's the end of today's recording for Sleuthing Saturday. Until next time when things are also exciting and children and m m women show up and faint a lot. It'll be great.